every single cell in the body needs it. And the problem is your generation lives at three to 500% less than my generation. Welcome back everyone to episode 31 of the Clean Kitchen Podcast. And today we have a special guest on the podcast who is a hormone expert. Dr. Greg Brannon began his medical career in 1988 as a gynecologist. And in his career, he has delivered well over 10,000 babies. And in 2006, Dr. Brannon first became interested in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Don't worry, we're going to get into that and what that means. Uh, and after performing research about this topic in 2012, Dr. Brandon founded Optimal Bio and now serves as the medical director for seven Optimal Bio locations. Dr. Brandon, welcome to the Clean Kitchen Podcast, and thank you for joining us today. Wow, Kevin, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Eight now. Austin, Texas opens up in a few weeks. Eight? All right. All right. We're going to have to make, make that correction there. Eight. Eight Optimal Bio locations. And we're going to get into what Optimal Bio is, but we want to kind of focus this podcast episode all about hormones because I think... I'm at least I'm hearing it more and more these days. I'm hearing it pop up. I'm hearing I'm hearing the word endocrine endocrine disruptor and endocrine system and all these different things. But I want to start off with what what is the purpose of of our hormones? Okay, if we don't have any hormones, we're dead. No joking, no kidding. So they're very messengers. important. They're messengers. And what it is is it actually sends information to to from one area to another area. A nerve connects. Hormone secretes it from the organ, say the testicle, the ovary, into the bloodstream, and then it goes to the bloodstream, and every cell that needs it grabs it. That's how it works. But here's the thing nobody knows. What's the most abundant hormone in the human body? It's testosterone. <laughs> What's the most abundant hormone in a woman? It's testosterone. Testosterone actually is the precursor before estrogen. We would never say live your life with you know, 10% of insulin or 10% of cortisol. What we call losing hormones, okay, aging. And we'll go over a little detail later, but the amount, the, where the hormone levels have been 50, 60 years ago versus now, it's three to four fold lower. And that's leading to all these symptoms. These symptoms are not in people's heads. They're a lack of hormones. And we'll go over all the detail, but the bottom line is without hormones, testosterone being primarily the, the precursor, most of them, Bodily functions don't happen. Diabetes increases. Dementia increases. Cardiovascular disease increases. Yeah. Prostate cancer, breast cancer, or, uh, osteoporosis. You name it, I can say the disease process is yeah. a lack of testosterone. Yeah. yeah. So why why do you think testosterone levels have have decreased so much okay. over over the years? So there's a lot of theories, but there's pretty, I think in your face, pretty factual that happen. So in men, we have gonads. Gonads become testicles or ovaries. So in men, testicles make testosterone from the brain. Brain tells the testicle make testosterone. Then it converts to estrogen. In a woman, same thing happens. The brain tells the ovary make testosterone, converts in estrogen. Same system. How does the body know it has enough testosterone? The estrogen is called a feedback loop. It goes back to the brain, the hypothalamus, mm -hmm. and says, hey, we have plenty of testosterone. We can stop making it. We can, now we can make it as we need it. But there's not a level like, say, insulin. Diabetes, if a blood sugar is over 100, you have a disease. There's no disease of low estrogen or testosterone. I believe there is. I think it's called aging, but there's no disease. So what they do is doctors mistakenly look at a lab and see a range. A woman, 3 to 41. A man, 264 to 916. If you're in that range, you're healthy. Mm-hmm. But here's the question. What was the range 50 years ago? A woman was 70 to 300. Wow. A man was 800 to 1400. And that's not a limit. That's a bell curve. It's 80%. So I believe this estrogen goes back to the brain. What if our body consumed fake estrogens, xenoestrogens? It would trick our body that we're making a lot of estrogen. The body thinks, if I have a lot of estrogen, therefore I have a lot of testosterone, and it will make less of it. Those are called neuroendocrine disruptors or chemical endocrine disruptors, everything you said beforehand. Mm -hmm. And the big ones are phthalates. Phthalates do three things. They turn off testosterone. They increase the enzyme called aromatase, which makes estrogen, so it makes more of your own estrogen, and also looks like estrogen. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So that's called a hyperestrogenic state. Uh, atrazine is a pesticide. It also is an estrogen mimicker. PVC piping. Uh, I could do, there's, there's a website with over a thousand of them. The sad part is your generation was bombarded in the womb. So your starting point, we had puberty, was lower than my starting point, And I'm lower than one above that. So mm-hmm. these disease processes occur because your body is not enough reserve to do its function. Testosterone, example, diabetes. Hemoglobin A1C is decreased by 17.6% in three months of testosterone being optimized. Mm-hmm. So the body, I call it, we're all Ferraris. You can't drive a Ferrari without gas. Testosterone mm-hmm. is the gas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you mentioned you mentioned phthalates there, and I think that that's an important piece of this too, because I think there's ingredients in personal care products and, and household products and just every I mean it's in it's in plastic, it's everywhere nowadays. And so how, how ex- I, I want to understand this. How exactly are these phthalates and other endocrine disrupting ingredients, how are they how are they messing up our hormones? Okay. So when we absorb them via food or drink or through our skin, cosmetics. Yeah. Uh, well, that, again, there's a, there's been there's been over seventy to eighty thousand new chemicals in the release in the last five six years. They can't all be tested. Some right. of them fall under some of them fall under fragrances. There's, we don't know what's going out there. So the bottom line is this: a phthalate it can go in our body. Your body gets it, and what it does it disrupts our endocrine our neuroendocrine system. So it tricks the body. We have more estrogen than we do. Mm. Therefore, the things that actually it hurts, it stops the production or inhibits the production of testosterone. Mm. Yeah. You've talked about testosterone and estrogen already quite a bit. And I think most people associate those hormones with being reproductive hormones. But I think you've mentioned too previously that there's also hundreds of other use cases related to those hormones. Is that right? Should, should they be broader? Every single cell in the body <laughs> has a receptor for testosterone. I don't call it a sex hormone. It does delineate in the gonads when the genes kick on, that's called the, the genotype, kicks on and does its work, the phenotype, the way we express our body, either being a boy or a girl occurs in the womb. Yes. But then there's, again, think about it. You would never say, oh, it's okay to have no insulin. It's called diabetes. Yeah. We'd never say it's okay to no, have no cortisol. That's Addison's. You die. It's okay not to have any thyroid. No, you die. The problem is when you lose testosterone, you lose it slowly over time. We call that aging and disease processes. That like bone is made by testosterone. Again, uh, testosterone suppresses prostate cancer in men, uh, breast cancer in women. It's because when you're youthful, think about it. That's your highest testosterone level. That's one of the least diseases we have. It's not, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, it's easy stuff. I want, do I want the hormones of an 80 year old or an 18 year old? 18. Where's the data support that's bad? None. It's just the opposite. Mm. But everything on your show, in your pocket, everything you talk about, the ingredients, yeah, it's every plastic bottles, BPA, BPS, yeah. all day, every day. Uh, there's been four uh, phthalates been, that, that have been thrown out of the body, uh, out of the system, or out of the, they've been, uh, FDA got rid of them, EPA got rid of them. But there's hundreds, and they're and they're moved new every day. And you you got to wait generations. Uh, I'll give you the example about uh, hormones in general. What they do because mm-hmm. we're talking about sex delineation. So there was uh, in the '40s they wanted to help decrease miscarriage rate in women. So they got a synthetic hormone called um, thalidomide. Babies were born with no limbs, but that's a sex hormone. No, but it also affects bone. And muscle. So these things, these limbs do not go. You have another one called DES. They are used for miscarriage rates too. A synthetic estrogen. That causes increased miscarriage rate. Atopic pregnancies, infertility. Because when you get a structure your body does not make and throw it into our system and it binds the receptor, but doesn't fully do its job, whatever's down the line, the cascade is inhibited. So it's a human hormone. That's it. It's not for sex. That's part of it. But every single cell in the body needs it. And the problem is your generation lives at three to 500% less than my generation. And I live less than one above me. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's amazing. It's amazing how much it's all connected. We've talked about phthalates and microplastics, glyphosate, which I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on in a little bit. Same thing. Yeah. But it's, it, what's amazing to me too is how, how much knowledge you have on this topic. Tell, tell us a little bit about your story. You, you started as a, a gynecologist in 1988 and now- 
running Optobio? What, what's the story? How did you get here? So I was an OBGYN. I did my residency in 88 to 92. So I became a gynecologist. And I loved women health care. I loved uh, – OB was a great field because I love life. I got to deliver babies. Um, I love dealing with women. It's usually healthy surgeries. It's usually um, just healthy young women response. But also I love watching the aging process. And to deal with an 80-year-old is beautiful. An 18-year-old is beautiful. It's, like, it's just a great way to watch the series of life. But I started having in my OB practice women complaining of, of – Mood swings, depression, tiredness, vague things. They're vague. I understand that. But our body's not vague. They're telling us, warning us. And all of the, and every time you hear these symptoms, they give antidepressants, SSRIs, or Wobutrin. And I'm not saying there's not a place for them, but I guarantee it's not 90% of us, not mm-hmm. even not, not even close. So I started looking at, there had to be another thing. So I started looking at, first off, how the body works. Vitamin D affects 2,000 genes in the body. Vitamin D is, a, is, is also an anabolic steroid. That helps depress anxiety. The actual neurotransmitters are not even made in the brain per se. The precursors are made in the gut by bacteria. That's the symbiosis of bacteria. Uh, also, um, fish oil, omega-3 makes the brain stronger, so it talks better. Omega-3 and omega-9s. Omega-6 and seed oils. Seed oils are poison. <laughs> so these things I started learning from my own self, my ed- education. Myself, personally, I was diabetic 18 years, 20 years ago. And during that time of my life, I was doing triathlons and CrossFit. So I had nothing with working out, but I ate six meals a day. I ate oatmeal every morning, all the stuff you're supposed to do. And I read a book by Mark Sisson called Primal Blueprint. It changed my life. And um, then I started, a funny thing, I took a lot of care of a lot of diabetics as, as an OB. I put them on my intermittent fasting, fat, protein diets. And these women that were insulin dependent when they're pregnant now were not diabetic. So then I was introduced to pellets. And I first heard about it, and I thought it was crap because I never heard about it. And I was supposed to know all this stuff. And I started doing some research. I found out how ignorant I was. And I, in my book, I put my arrogance out of my ignorance. Um, my new book's called The Homer Handbook. My new book comes out in March 12th called Restore. It's 85,000 words with 600 references on the science. So I want the science. I believe our body is wonderfully made. I think it's phenomenal. But... Everything with everything is made drug wise in allopathic medicine blocks receptor or blocks an enzyme. We never think about the cascade effects like cholesterol. Our brain is 95% cholesterol. All steroids are made from cholesterol. The hypothesis behind cholesterol causing a heart attack is crap, but mm-hmm. nobody knows this stuff. So it's important. I found that your generation saw my generation and said, I'm not doing that. And they're trying other things. Jason Fung's book called Obesity Code and Diabetes Book. He's a nephrologist, diabetes specialist. He said, whatever you tried before didn't work. Try something different. Mm -hmm. So bottom line is going backwards is actually going forward. The three meals a day, the food pyramid, that's the crazy fad diet. Fasting, eating fat and protein, that's been used for 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. And bread is different in America than Europe because around. So we're killing ourselves slowly and think it's progress. Right, yeah. Yeah, Kevin and I did an entire podcast episode all about the food pyramid and basically the <laughs> yeah, the the negative consequences that it had on America. And, and Kyle, it was pushed through by the grain company through Senator McGovern in 1977. Yeah. So a grain company lobbyist pushed this through to sell grains. You can look back from like 1920 to 1980. Diseases, cardiovascular disease, dementia like this. 80, boom. The first case of, of non-alcoholic fatty liver was 1980, set three years after the food pyramid. What is fatty liver? Sugar. Stop eating sugar. Fatty liver's gone in six weeks. This is Dr. Fung's book stuff in his, in his articles. And fatty liver was never heard about until 1980, three years yeah. after adding sugar. Take away sugar, goes away. And yeah. 46% of Americans have it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insanity. It's crazy. Amazing. So- so, so if there were if there were three foods or three ingredients that you would tell people to cut out to improve their their hormone levels, I I, I assume seed, vegetable and seed oils would be number seed one. Seed oils, cottonseed and grapeseed was used for machine lubrication. Mm-hmm. <laughs> machine yeah. lubrication in the twenties. Yeah, didn't they, they added, accidentally figure it out that it yeah, that you could use it as a cooking oil? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, so see, omega sixes yeah. are poison. We need, to, we need to eat them in a one-to-one ratio with omega-3s. We get a 21, okay? That's oxidation. That's atherosclerosis, inflammation. Everything we talk about is inflammation, right? Mm-hmm. Carbohydrates are the biggest. Carbohydrates and seed oils 
So the bottom line is a grain in America, understand it's different, sprayed with Roundup and rich flour. So seed oils, enriched flour, and to get away with. Added sugar? <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, they're, that because then you see sugar, I agree with that. But oatmeal is more sugar than two root beer floats. Mm. So it's like, where sugar, where it comes from? Because we need a little bit, just a little bit. But I'm a big, I'm a big inner faster carnivore egg guy. I yeah. think inner fasting, Jason Fung's book, carnivore diet, keto, all that works. Um, Dr. McCullough has a little article saying that a little bit of carbohydrate helps over time to refuel the carbohydrate, but a healthy carb, like yams, you know, non GMO food. The keys, the keys are genetic modified organic, the best you possibly get, grass-fed beef, eggs. Mm -hmm. I personally eat four hours a day, and I eat eggs and meat all day. But I still love fruit. And I, people who know me, I love ice cream and candy now and then. But mm -hmm. within my window, right, my window, mm -hmm. it's we only, store, we only gain weight when we eat. Duh. But why? Because when we eat sugar, mainly sugar, it stimulates insulin. Insulin's job is to store fat, mm -hmm. period. So we have these two major regulation hormones. You have mTOR, which builds, and you have uh, AMPK, which stops building. So in the fasting state and exercise, you make AMPK. Mm -hmm. In the building age, you eat protein, it makes mTOR. It's a great balance. The problem was we eat like sumo wrestlers, a little bit of carb a carbohydrate multiple times a day. This whole idea of keeping the calorie burning, calorie in, calorie out, there's zero scientific data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sp speaking of, of fruit, um, uh, there's a, there's an obsession, uh, obsession nowadays all about blood sugar and kind of like what you, what you just said, keeping, keeping blood sugar levels down. If I'm say, say I'm not intermittent fasting, say I'm, I'm having, or I mean, I guess you still can be intermittent fasting, but say I'm having two meals a day, Perfect. lunch, lunch and dinner. And say, say, in, but say in between lunch and dinner, I had like, an apple for as a snack and that's going to spike my blood sugar. Should I yes. be concerned about that spike? Not if you're eating within the window. And this is important. There's been studies to show you got to play the food, rice, broccoli, and steak. If your first bite is rice, mm -hmm. your sugar's doubled. Mm -hmm. If your first bite is broccoli or steak, it's half what it'd be. So if the insulin's already on board, you don't have the spike. So if you're eating your apple between your hours, that's fine. Uh, uh, Sean Baker, brilliant doctor, wrote the carnivore diet. He has yeah. no fruit at all. The problem again is our fruit has been genetically modified or grown to be sweeter. Okay. To be, yes, yeah, sweeter. And you know, in our rich flour, they put amphetamines, they put things in our food to make you addicted to it. Uh, the salt. So that's the thing. There's a great book for women, woman, for women called Fast Like a Girl by Dr. Pels. A woman has a cycle throughout the month. Men are, we're simpler. Estrogen part of the cycle loves to fast. The mid cycle, progesterone loves sugar and salt. Give it through that window. Then you go back. It's just important to understand that our body is going to do things. The problem is we, we eat so much sugar. We, we can't store it. It goes sugar to glycogen, glycogen to fat. The problem is we have too much. We, we never burn our stored sugar. So therefore, we have more born fat. And you can't outwork it. You just can't. That's why the hormone and everything I'm saying is optimized when your thyroid and testosterone is op is burning properly. Yeah. Obesity kind of along these lines seems to be a major problem. I think 40% now of Americans are considered obese. Does that have to do with just natural aging or, or is there a hormone kind of it's angle? In here all based well? on the food diet, the food pyramid and, and our hormones. There was a study 1998 to 2018 in the army. This army guys, this army guys. Okay. 12% overweight in 19, in 1998. Now it is 82%. Wow. And they eat the standard American diet. Standard S, American A, diet D. It's sad. <laughs> sad. Very sad. <laughs> okay. So some of the special units actually eat a high protein, high uh, fat diet. It's So the answer is I, you go back to 77 and look at the data. So obesity uh and you look at places like uh, uh, the Native American reservation where the Americans took over their diet. You look at the, you look at the Aborigines in, in, in uh, Australia when the government took over their diet. Before that, they were high fat, low pro, high fat, high protein, low carb, beautiful bodies. Then you give them the, the, the bread 
and all kind of stuff. You can actually see studies on this showing that our diet or my food period, my generation. I'm telling you, I was the guinea pig. It's the problem is you got the government involved telling us what to eat and drink. Garbage. That's not their job. That's not their job at all. The key is free market decide what to do. We can decide. But again, the fad is three meals a day, three snacks a day, calorie in, calorie out. Um, that's the fad. We can look at hard data. Again, your great grandpa ran around at 12, 1300. If we checked your two levels, you'd be under 300. Okay. Your great grandma was 300. Yeah. So what's, so, what's, so what's the consequences of having three, four hundred times less hormones over your age? We're going to find out in your generation. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's really sad. It's, it's scary, too, as well, yeah. to, to think about that. So thinking about all these different hormone levels, the quote unquote acceptable level has changed from 50 years ago. When you talk to patients and people come into Optimal Bio, how do you think about acceptable levels and, and what targets they should be aiming for? I, I do this console right here, what we're doing right now with every single patient. I draw a picture of the brain, hypothalamus, and pituitary. I draw the hormones, I draw a feed bath loop, and I show them. And I say, I always use diabetes as an example. Everybody knows that diet, that disease. So I say, okay, we know blood sugar over 100, da, 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 da. Here's the disease process. And then I show them this. And I just say, hey, and I, if I ask any doctor this, First off, I've asked any gynecologist, what's the most abundant hormone in your women's body? Nine out of 10 are going to say testosterone. They're going to say estrogen off the bat. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're going to actually say, well, what's the, look at they fall in the range. Okay, good. What was the range 150 years ago? I don't know. <laughs> you should know. That's why this environmental thing is really, really important. It's, I, I believe if we, if the, if the producer of a product was liable, microplastics go away. Dirty water goes away. You know what I mean? This whole idea of private property. I'm a big believer in, in natural law and, and, and the way God made it. So private property, uh, the first law of natural law self, is self-defense. This human body's mine. We have we, people build things. And I love building. I love science. I love searching. But I should be responsible for my actions. If my product falls on your property, you're not responsible. I am. And we've, we've, we've uh, let, we left companies Get away with this. Mm -hmm. And we're one of the cleanest countries in the world. I travel the world. Go to China, go to Africa. Their beaches are just strong with this plastics. So I'm not here to hammer our, our government. I'm not saying that at all. We're one of the cleanest in the world. The problem is, is others others don't respect their own property. And that, that microplastic is real. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen studies. Cut open a fish. Just cut open a fish you catch. It's yeah. insanity. And we eat that. Yeah. yeah. Those are forever chemicals. Mm -hmm. That's why... Whatever we eat, remember we eat what they ate, and that's why I'm a big believer in grass-fed beef. Yeah, that, Kevin and I talk about that all the time. We always say the the ultimate source of protein and fat is grass-fed beef because it's the least contaminated. So, so do you personally eat any fish or seafood or anything like that, or no? Uh, like some of the stuff, you know, farm farm anything? No, wild right. catch. I, I'm a, I've always been a red meat. I love red meat. I've always been yeah, that way. Same. Um, but I'm Italian. I'm not a pasta in 15 years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and when I was in Italy, the summer, we ate pasta every day and pizza. No stomach ache. You were fine. No, nothing. Because it's a different, people don't, they don't, they can't wrap them. I could not wrap my mind around it. I couldn't believe it. The difference is insane. Is I that every bread pasta? Is that just because that it's not sprayed with all these pesticides and herbicides or acid? Those are the two. It's not the, the actual wheat, how it's made isn't different. It's just... seed, I know there's a great, I watched this great video on French bread and there is something in the way the heirloom seeds are, the way it grows, the soil. Yes. But okay. the bottom line is folic acid. We have no mechanism in our body to get rid of it. Okay. None. So we have to actually defolate, methylate it, help it out. Mm-hmm. Phos I guess the phosphate, in fact, you know, bear, um, in 2010, I think the FDA calls gly uh, Roundup, glyphosate, an antibiotic now. <laughs> okay, so these definitions change. Yeah. This is the problem. It's the ones with the money, the gold make the rule, right? The golden rule. But we have to, we have to as consumers, if we, the problem is it costs so much money to do this stuff. And yeah. we're just schmoes trying to make a living and it's hard. But you have a little garden. Do it yourself. Uh, find a co-op around your house that has a, that has cows. Uh, there are some stores that you can get. You know, there are some companies that you can buy it. The best thing in the world. Everybody free around where you live can get some chickens 
Um, mm-hmm. and there's always a co-op at a, at a, at a, you know, a fret, a market around the area, a local market, getting fret, getting extra chickens. Look at the yellow, look at the yellow of a yoke of a store bought or one you get from a farm. Mm-hmm. It's insane. And yeah. then, you know, and then the people say the egg yolk's bad. It's probably the most nutritious food there is, is the yolk of an egg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was listening to, to you on another podcast and you said something I loved. You said our bodies are meant to thrive, not survive. I think right now with all of the the chemicals that we're giving our bodies, they're just surviving and, and people almost get used to this sense of surviving. Like you said, people would come to you and say, oh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm sad. I just don't have any energy. And you just get accustomed to this lifestyle. I guess what are the first steps you'd make if that's how, how you're feeling? You want to in, improve your hormone levels. Would you start Removing plastics, would you start with food? Where's where the most impact you can make right away? I always say there's just five things I think you got to do to age gracefully. Sleep. Period. Sleep. Mm-hmm. Put the phone away. Put the TV away. Get rid of blue light. Go to bed in a dark room. Sleep. Mm-hmm. You need five cycles of REM. You, that's crucial. Two, you got to eat. Find what works for you. Again, I'm not saying do keto. I'm not saying do carnivore. I get Last night, I know I had, I had a bowl of ice cream, so I'm not to be hypocritical. But I do have a, <laughs> but I do have a, I do have a window, and I think finding a window easier for men, eight hour minimum, maybe get to six. Live your life that way; it changes everything. Number three, exercise, walking, just walking, then lifting heavy things. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Lifting heavy things could be just push ups, just doing basic gym class we did in the sixties. Pull-ups, push-ups, jump rope, kettlebells. And, then you, and I believe push-ups, deadlifts, squats are crucial overall. Kettlebells, but just rotational, move. You know, just do that three, four days a week. Number uh, four, remove stress. Uh, and that's, and again, I'm, I don't want to get preachy here, but God, when we talk about the vibe, our body was we're made in the image of God. God knows what he did. This environment is beating us up, and he knows we have things to adapt on that. Find what that gets you that peace, understand that. And number five, restore what you've lost. I think that's almost number one because all those things you can't do without the proper hormone balance. So that's what gets me this thing here. It's an outside agency, an outside agent is what's messing up our neuroendocrine system. It's not because we're, and I, this, these overweight people, these diabetics, I, can, I was one, um, we're not lazy. That's the thing I want to understand. We're not lazy. We're trusting people, so-called scientists. I'm not, I'm gonna be mean on my job here. Um, some doctors, most of us, we're just dispenser of what they tell us to do. We don't think sometimes. And I was that person. You know, I didn't think. I was there. There should be there. But you start looking at daddy, you're like, what are we doing? So I think it's important that I believe liberty demands responsibility. And I believe the king and queen is in the mirror. But 80% of us want to be told what to do. Uh, I'm not that kind of person. I always ask why. And I, and I find your generation is a generation that it, it excites me because you're asking why. You're not just saying because we say so. You're saying, but why? And I yeah. think that's what's exciting. I think podcasts, I think the internet is insanely scares the, the establishment because <laughs> we don't have to get anybody's approval to get on TV or anything like that. You just go. And that's why guys like Sean Baker, you have you have Uberman, you have uh, Atia. They're reading, they're studying, they're asking questions. We may disagree a little bit of things, but the bottom line is we're asking questions. Uh, you have Dr. Malone, he's brilliant. Dr. McCullough, brilliant asking questions. And I think that's what's so important. And then before anything goes in your body, you ask and they don't answer, you leave. Yeah. That's such a, such a great point. There's so much more information out there than there ever has been before. Even here, we, we try to talk about all these topics. Yeah, James, and so many yeah, other- yeah, yeah, James Patterson said, knowledge will ever govern ignorance. And for those men that, be, that ought to be their own governors, they must understand the power that knowledge gives. Yeah. So knowledge is key. And again, I'm I'm a believer. So fear the Lord, and then go go, then go be free. And it's very very important to understand that again, liberty means responsibility. But we've got to take charge. And it doesn't mean I'm going to be an expert in everything, but I can ask people, get wise counsel. But ultimately, it's my decision. Yeah, yeah. A lot of what we've been talking about doesn't necessarily stall, fall under this conventional approach to medicine. Do you ever get pushback from other doctors or other people in the industry? Nor do I care. <laughs> Jason Fung wrote a great book called Obesity Code. And he starts off the book, would you take advice from a fat doctor? Okay? Yeah. That's great. You guys Google it up. Chesterfield. Yeah. 
the number one cigarette uh, by OBs recommend for pregnant women. Um, you know, whatever cigarette recommend the best for, for doctors that from doctors, we make mistakes. Okay. <laughs> Science is not one person. Science is not one to tell me what to do. So I think we have to ask questions and, and do things. And that's why it's important. Even with all that smoking, you know, all kinds of stuff we did in the past, that was just pushed by marketing. We weren't overweight. There are a lot of things you got to look at. That's what you got to understand is sometimes people say things that, and they want to push things. And I'm not against the capitals. I'm not against that at all. I'm, I love that. Make a, make a free, let the free market decide. Mm -hmm. But to be told, if you made a product and the government says you must take that product, you hit the mother load. That's my problem. Again, Matt, Matt Jefferson said, if you allow the government to take what food eat and medicines take, you'll be in a worse state of tyranny. That's important. That's the way you have to understand. Put the government where it goes, protect our life, liberty, and leave us alone. And then we be free markets. See what happens. That's why the internet is the greatest free market thing there is. I love it. Yeah. If a doctor won't sit and talk and listen to you, change. Yeah. Change. Yeah. yeah. America is the greatest, I believe. I've done, I've, done, I've done work with surgery in Africa around the world. Emergencies. I'm hit by a car. I need a liver. I want to be right here. Mm -hmm. How to eat. How to work out. An Aborigine walking through Australia might be the best place to be. Some island off of Guam, um, some zones in Greece and Italy. Mm -hmm. So what do they do differently? You know, we heard that they're pushing this big blue zone stuff, a little fallacy there. Yeah. The, 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 the area of the world with the longest life expectancy and the least disease eats a pound and a half of red meat every day. Hong Kong. Wow. I have re yeah, I've read that. Mm-hmm. So the blues of these stories are being pickies. They're yeah. picking that. Up. Um, Sean Baker destroyed that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just just look at your data, do your stuff. You, you guys are doing great. And I watch your thing. You go tell me what's in food. I love it. Yeah. You know, when you start, I'm not going to mention any companies, but yeah, there's a few. <laughs> you, yeah, there's a few I'll never see again. Um, but I, yeah, I may not know that. I mean, dude, Doctor Brandon, me, 20 years ago, I laugh at this Doctor Brandon. Yeah, and. Um, that's why it's important that we just keep on educating and keep learning, keep asking questions. Yeah. 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 The, the internet is, is definitely a great thing. Um, I know, I mean, it, it can be a great thing. I know Netflix just, they, they did some sort of documentary about the blue zones and kind of pushed kind of a vegan diet, plant-based diet, I guess. And then I know, uh, another documentary just came out recently. I don't know if you saw it. It was like a twin study and they compared the vegan diet versus yeah. Omnivore diet. Yeah. You have any thoughts on that? Oh yeah. So it's, the, the vegan diet is the worst thing in the world, but, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Let the free market decide. Right. That's right. what I'm saying is I don't want Greg Brannon being the king of the world saying you must eat red meat. No, that's what I've done. Make my mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. Greg Brannon be a vegan. No other side. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's some, there's a culture really religious reasons. Do your thing. I got it yeah. all. It's yeah. being told. By somebody that has no bearing on my life, you must do X, Y, or Z. And the one word we have that makes us as free, that only makes us free, is the word no. That's it. You use it. Yeah. You're not, the legal term for mandate is, I mandate you hold this pen. It only becomes a mandate the moment you grab it. Mm. Okay, that's the constitutional black dictionary of a word. So don't <laughs> grab it. Just say no. Now, there's repercussions for those sometimes. You may lose this or lose that. Personally, I'm going to live and thrive. It's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. See you later. So that's, yep. what I, that's what I'm hoping for. I want people, my new book, Restore, the whole last section is on this liberty part. And I believe that's the crux of all this. I think we've given away our responsibility, i.e. our liberty, to get along, to be told what to do by the alcohol experts. And then when we pay the price, we have nobody to blame us, but we, we, want to poke, we want to blame other people for our decision. There's a great essay by a guy named Frederick Bastian. He wrote in 1850 called The Law. It's basically a, um, a rebuttal to uh, Marx's and Frederick's Communist Manifesto. And at the end of it, he talks about, he said, um, he says, we're not against government education or government health care. It's all this stuff. I mean, we're not against health care or, or or school, all, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. He goes, we're against government run. He goes, we give these witch doctors power to do these things, but every single time these witch, these witch doctors, these governments, they do these social experiments, but they always exempt themselves. 
Okay, they mess up here. They next generation, next generation. He goes, we got to go back to liberty. He goes, what is liberty? A belief in God and, and his a God and His works. That's it. Leave me alone. I'll do my stuff. And a free market society will see what happens. Hmm. And I know we play in a world that's not tilted that way, but I'm still not going to compromise what I believe. And uh, again, 20 year old Dr. Brandon, 20s from now, I thought I believed in liberty. I thought I believed in that stuff, but I didn't. I listened to people that were more authoritative than I was. Mm-hmm. And they're not. And that's yeah. the thing is, I, I happen to know you two gentlemen, and I know how much work you do. And I know much. I know how much extra reading a lot of other doctors do. do. And they're also brilliant people, but they, we're very myopic. We read what they tell us to read. We do this. We do that. We don't read outside of it. And I think, you know, like how many classes in nutrition I take in medical school? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero. You know? Yeah. So you yeah. take vitamin D, keep your level on 85, you increase your life six years, just vitamin mm-hmm. D. Mm-hmm. So these are things that we're going to keep asking questions, to modify and keep going. But I know one thing, I want my Ferrari, me, to run with high, high, high test fuel the best I can. Mm-hmm. I want my Ferrari the best it can be. And then I want to do a simple thing. It is simple. Really think about it. 30 minutes a day working out, eating properly changes your life, mm-hmm. changes your life. Yeah. yeah. The poor people that, 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 that aren't listening, that they're scared to try, it's because, again, they've been told that we've been beaten down. So I'm trying to wake up lions, baby. That's all I'm trying to do is wake up lions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. No, the constant theme here from this conversation, it feels like is, is about taking control back from people that, that seem to have taken it from us. Um, one of the, the ways in which people can do that is by helping to, I guess, add, add back hormones. Help, help me to understand a little bit more what bioidentical hormone therapy is. Kyle hit it at the beginning, but what is it in, in short okay. for people? So pharma, pharma companies cannot own organic molecule. They can't own it. So just say your body makes this. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay. A pharmacy company cannot own this. Therefore, I eat no money. But they make this. They're both pens, <laughs> but this one's better than this one. But this one's made by my body. Mm-hmm. But this one's better. <laughs> but my body's this one. So bioidentical, I call it human, is the one your body makes. Like insulin being genetically modified to actually make E. coli, make uh, insulin, revolutionize diabetes. Because now instead of taking pig or or um, or uh, or cow insulin, which is close, now it's identical. Um, thyroid disease. There's a pig thyroid for some reason is identical to ours. So bioidentical means recognize Mayo Clinic says recognizes as same. So it's not foreign to your body. So therefore, your body could utilize it, metabolize it, and eliminate it just the way it's meant to. Mm-hmm. When you get the chemicals that can't, that's where things mess up. So that's why I want the human hormone at optimal levels. Yeah. And the optimal level is very dependent on your genetics. Just say, Kevin, you feel great around 12, 1300. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Your brother feels great around 1100. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. No care. But you'll tell me, wow, I'm, I'm alive. I feel great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And going off that, what are like, I guess a patient that, that comes in to see you, what are, what are some of the symptoms that they see improve after they do? I don't care if you're 18 year old boy. I don't care if you're an eight year old woman. I'm very for, I have a lot, a lot of our military come to us mm-hmm. a lot. A lot of our green berets, a lot of these, you know, guys look like hurricanes. Those people, normal schmoes like me, Middle, a 28-year-old woman, a 45-year-old woman, a menopausal woman, tired of being tired, brain fog, top two every single day. Mm. Anxiety, mood change, that's the order. Everything's always muscle and sex. Nope. Mm. And mm. then and I'm, and I'm, I'm like their 10th doctor. We're never the first doctor. And then they go, and we have a 90% retention rate. When I get their levels to ranges of three or four generations ago, they're not bound to come back. There's no force. There's no money paid in advance. They come back because they feel the difference. A 98% retention rate. Wow. It speaks for itself how powerful it is. People can feel the difference. You mentioned that it's normally people's 10th option. Why isn't it more common for people to test this out as their first or second option to see if it makes a difference? Tired of being tired, anxiety, moods, all normal. Here's your Zoloft. Here's your Prozac. It's aging. 
It's date night. It's all these things. Mm. And that's the problem. It's like, again, I draw, I have my car. I towed into you. And I say, I can't drive it. And you said, wow, did you wash it yet? I washed it. You put air in the tires? I put air in the tires. Check the gas tank? Oh, I didn't think about the gas tank. <laughs> but now I put gas in it. Now I drive it. Oh, I got a flat tire. I can feel it. So to me, these symptoms are red lights on your dashboard coming off. And I believe what we do is we get these things, we mass tape over it. We just block the red light. No, we should follow yeah. the red light to where it goes and find the root cause. The root yeah. cause is that you can evaluate the body when the level is optimized. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the thyroid. I do that in the, this and the thyroid, the two things we focus on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Stop putting band-aids on things and get to the root cause. Root mm-hmm. cause. There's still things. Yeah. Again, there are places for antidepressants. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that. There are places, right, right. There. There are places right. for surgery. There are places. I was a surgeon. There's places mm-hmm. for that. But it's not everybody needs the same pill. Like, again, a woman, a menopausal woman comes in my building with those, those complaints. The drug of choice in America is an antidepressant. Mm-hmm. She does not. She's not depressed. She has no hormones. Yeah, I work yeah. a lot with uh, with PT. I wrote a paper on PTSD. I work a lot with TBI. The brain can't even talk without testosterone. Mm. But seventy percent, eighty percent of our men who come with PTSD are off their medications in a few months by just having vitamin D, testosterone, and fish oil. Thanks. It's a lot better, a lot cheaper than medication. Yeah. In our new book, I have a, one of our team still uh, ticks guys. Uh, he was a breacher. He tells his whole story about his whole story about his TPIs, his concussions. And how going to hormones just got him back to get his life back. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It seems like uh, the more you talk about hormones, the more obvious it is. It, it seems like almost the foundation of a lot of people's health issues or symptoms that they're facing. It, is it common that you see that? It's a foundation from the beginning of your formation in the womb. You're not a boy without them. Yeah. That's when it starts. So the yeah. answer is yes. Every day it's the foundation. Yeah. yeah. And, and all these things you can do to help improve that foundation, the Avoiding the chemicals. That, choosing the, the, right the, the, the thing about that, guys, is this, is I don't want people catatonic. Like I'm mean, going to live in a bubble and, right. and just try to survive. Mm-hmm. Again, we're meant to climb mountains. We're meant to travel seas. We're meant to, to, we're meant to do those things. We're meant to attack. Let's do it smart. Buy filtered water. Uh, I love the Berkey water filter and the government after because of, of, of uh, the, the silver in it. There's a lot of literature on hydrogenized water. I'm doing more literature on that. So being hydrated is very important. Um, we'll find things to make this body work so you could go attack life. So I don't want people to be scared. Sometimes you may have to drink out of a bottle of water. I got it. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But having a bottle of water every single day in the heat and watch it leach out, right. Um, we used to, I used to work in a pharmacy lab in the 70s. And IVs were all in glasses. In glass bottles, mm-hmm. but plastic is easier. But glass was inert, so whatever you put in glass would not be would not affect it. Now we know it's just the IV body you're getting. This the, the the IV coming down the bottle sitting there it leaches out. The medicine, the, the fluid in there is very life saving. But the problem we don't think these things out sometimes. We wait till the complications occur. You know we go all through we go through five G all day. I mean we that, that we are made we're we're a battery. What does that do to our bodies? You know, we find out generations later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a little bit scary, but uh, hopefully, <laughs> no, no, hopefully. No, it's okay. Our body's made. Be yeah. strong. Get out there and attack. Exactly. And yes. and, and do all these things that, that we've talked about on this episode. Five things. To, That's all it is. Yeah. And it's all easy stuff. Exactly. All right. So we're going to we're gonna end the podcast episode with a little bit of a game here. We, we, we kind of hit on a bunch of these points already. But uh, we're going to play a game of called Truth or Myth. So basically, I'm going to say a statement, and you're going to tell us whether this statement is true or false. And you can... In my, my opinion. It may not, it may not be real, but my opinion. <laughs> in your opinion. In your opinion. In your opinion. You can build upon your, your answer if, if you want to do so. So statement number one is eating soy products can significantly disrupt hormone levels due to their high phytoestrogen content. True. Especially the GMO. Yep. Okay. So, so, so do you. The problem, the problem is real quick. It's a yeah. great protein source. Non GMO soy, fantastic for health. Tofu is okay. great. It's against GMO and it can affect boys. There's no doubt about that. Yes. Okay. So, so look for organic non GMO soy if you're, if you're going to go. Or just eat red meat. 
Or just that, okay, love that. I love that. All right, next statement. Melatonin supplements are completely safe and can be used regularly without any side effects. I'm torn on this one. I used to say true. Talking to Roger Huberman and read some stuff, I'm confused on this. Really? Because melatonin is a phenomenal scavenger of free radicals. There's a lot of good literature for that. Hmm. Sunglasses block melatonin, block vitamin D formation. Blue light is great in the morning, bad at night. Are we messing up by supplementation? So I'm I'm confused on that. Uh, I take it now and then. So Huberman can't stand it, and he's a neuro a neurology you know neurologist mm-hmm. uh, physiologist. Um, but I know the savager side of it, so I'm torn right now. Um, so I'm, okay. I'm I don't want to be I'm I'm, I'm wimping out on this. I know both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, two years ago, I'd have been without a doubt as perfect. Right now, I'm a little confused. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Hope good. that shows integrity that I'm listening and trying yeah. to learn. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. Yeah, good, good, honest answer. Yeah, we're always we're always learning. Um, okay. Next, vitamin D isn't really a vitamin, but it's actually a hormone. It's an anabolic steroid called secosteroid. That's true. True. It's <laughs> life changing. It, it is insane what it does. And you said around 85 is what people should shoot for. 85 to 100, yeah, it changes all the time. It's, uh, for, there's a, when we get infected, we have our, our immune system attacks a bacterial, say. And you want this bacteria to be destroyed by a nuclear bomb. But to protect that, the rest of your body, you have these things called degenerate cells that they basically cover that so that nuclear attack happens, but it controls. That's called uh, cytokine storms prevented by, te- by vitamin D. Vitamin D uh, MS, vitamin D Alzheimer's, vitamin D heart, vitamin D cancer. Yes, but is it is it was D, called D because it's the fourth vitamin found, and it is a anabolic secosteroid. And you got to take D three with K two to dash seven that protects the parathyroid and calcium. And it's a fallacy about overdose if you take K with it. It is probably the most important nutrient in the world. Period. In the story. Bottom line. Wow. Right. All right. Take take your vitamin D. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this one, we, we kind of talked about this earlier, but it's about intermittent fasting. And I've, I've heard this both ways, but intermittent fasting can disrupt hormonal balance, leading to issues with metabolism, mood, and overall health. I disagree. I think it, I think it disrupts. It, it, it actually, yes, to mess up your hormonal system to the good side. It makes mm, it better. Mm, it's rid of insulin. Mm. So baloney, baloney, baloney. Intermittent okay. fasting is how we ate for 6,000 years. Yep. And last one here, which one, another one we've kind of already talked about, but using electronic devices at night can disrupt the production of our sleep hormones. 1000% correct. Yeah. Avoid yeah. that blue light. Do you, I, I, every night I wear blue light blocking glasses. If yeah, I, I am going to go on my devices, do you, do yeah, you have I, that? I, I have a screen. I have yellow glasses in the room. Yes, I do. Even yeah. TV. Yeah. Yep. Love that. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's a quick way to get a ton of information there. Um, and I think we're, we're just about done. We have one last question for you, Dr. Brandon. This has been fantastic. But before we do, where can people go if they want to find more information about the work you're doing or Optimal Bio? So OptimalBio.com. Mm-hmm. I have a podcast. We're on everything, every platform. I have a YouTube channel. We have multiple shows in that channel. I do a 15-minute one called Clock Talk with Dr. Brandon. I do a topic for 15 minutes. Then we have in-depth interviews. Like we've had Dr. Malone on. We've had Sean Baker on. Uh, we have uh, many, um, uh, Tyler Brandon, my daughter, our CEO of a company mm-hmm. runs that. We have uh, great, we try to get as many good people in, in our, our local areas are at, national figures. We just want education there. Um, so we're off the bio.com. We have an office in Virginia, Charleston, Virginia. We have four in North Carolina, two in Charles, uh, in South Carolina. Austin, Texas opens in a couple of weeks, like I said. Nice. Um, but off the bio.com is everything. Every social media platform page, uh, again, my new book comes out called Restore. It's already a pre-order on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, all kind of stuff. Um, Forbes published in that book. It's the first hardback book on pellets ever. Mm, wow. Um, That's yeah, amazing. Pretty, pretty excited about it. It's, it's a book. It's not science So if you want to write something, well, it isn't, but not. It's what's the holy grail? Being younger? No. I think getting older, there's benefits to that. So my holy grail is getting the biochemistry of the youth with the wisdom of the age. I think mm-hmm. that's what we do with that. So I take the, through this journey, Ponce de Leon, you know, the fountain of youth, all kind of stuff, the Holy Grail. And then I go through the science of the body works, all the data showing against breast cancer, prostate cancer. And the last part of the book is on liberty. 
Wow, that is amazing. It's all it's got has everything in it, everything you need. We will I, as I yeah. wrote it, I want to add more, but may I start next book and how this goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta leave room for more. We will link everything that you just said down in the description so people can check it out. And we highly recommend checking out all of that information. Uh, absolutely amazing. The last question we have for you here, you've hinted at it a little bit, but what does your ideal meal look like? What do you eat in a day? Okay, I, my first meal, I love eggs every morning. So I eat, my, I eat between like, say, I go home at lunch around two o'clock, between two and six. So my thing is I like um, eggs or meat is what I eat, okay? And then dinner uh, is my wife's great cook and it's meat. Um, I do have, I like a salad now and then. Uh, I love avocado, so uh, yams. But mm -hmm. uh, we have a good color. I, I still like color. I still believe in that. It's just the problem with our, with our salad stuff is the pesticides. So all that stuff be washed off. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm, meat is the foundation of my meal. Yes, meat and eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yep. I still, for those that know me, I still like licorice now and then. I still like ice cream. So <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite, man. So yes. As long as it's in between the window, right? Thing. That's what, in the oh, window. They make fun of me all the time. If I'm having some liquors, my kids, I go, but it's in the window. So if I'm going to eat, I'll push that window out to four o'clock to eight. So I always say it's in the window, but they get it crap. That's there okay. Go. I just show me 8% body fat. It is what it is. You're good. <laughs> You're good. All right, Dr. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on the Clean Kitchen Podcast. We appreciate you and everyone else out there listening. We will see you next week in episode 32. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks.